Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Hak Shemayak. Yan Kippur, 5783, Tishri 10. Uh, if you were with us a few minutes ago, we were having some technical difficulties, so we started over. So I'm giving you the greeting again that I gave five, ten minutes ago. Um, you're not in the twilight zone. You're not repeating everything uh, over again. But Hashemaya, happy holidays or greetings, holiday greetings to you. Uh, this is Yom Kippur. Um, in rabbinical Judaism, is considered the most holy of all of the appointed times. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm seeing a error message or some kind of message on the screen there. Mm, that's okay. That's, that's okay. okay. Yeah, it keeps All popping right. up. It doesn't affect anything. All right. Okay. Good. Just want to make sure. Uh, we're having some technical different difficulties. And ain't as the saying goes, ain't nobody ain't nobody mad but the devil. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, as I was saying, Yom Kippur is considered the most holiest of the holidays. It is the Day of Atonement. Okay? This is the day that it is said the Lord judges us. And he also decides whether or not to end it all. So this is a very solemn day. The solemnity of today is very profound and we want to remember that as you spend this day repenting of your sins you should have spent the last 40 days going back to the last day of Av and the 29 days of Elul and the 10 days of Tishri 40 days you should have spent that repenting doing introspection, finding out where you have missed the mark as best you can. What is your, perhaps, not only your outward sin that you know very well and others around you may know, but that inward sin, that inner darkness that is in your heart. You know, the Bible says that the heart above all is deceit, deceitfully wicked and only the Lord knows what's in a person's heart and can discern it and separate it out. You, what's that scripture exactly, Leslie? The heart is deceitfully wicked? Mm, I there. Okay. By the way, just in case you don't know, I'm Rabbi Vincent P. Adams, and my lovely wife, Navia Lesney, and I are co-founders of Etzhaim Temple and Energy Center, and we welcome you here on this most solemn of feast days. What is it now? Jeremiah 17, verse 9 through 17. No, yes, verse 9 to 10. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Go ahead and read it. Right, let me open up on my app instead because that thing is short. <laughs> Jeremiah 9. 17, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Hmm. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Read that one more time, mm -hmm. louder. I'm the gonna... heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. That's why during the past 39 days, culminating with this 40th day, we were supposed to be 
engage in intense introspection because the heart above all is deceitfully wicked. Mm. Who can know it other than God? So we really have to put a lot of effort into discerning the deep things of our heart. Right. Even if we do good, what is our real motivation behind it? That's it. Uh, I'm going to need you to run into the prayer room and grab my glasses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I insist on <laughs> perpetrating <laughs> like I don't need them. Okay. But we have to spend a lot of time discerning and recognizing our deepest thoughts, you know, what some would call the sub the subconscious mind, those things that are deep within us, held in our heart, that you know may have been buried there um, at the moment, starting at the moment of conception, or at birth, or in early childhood, trauma that we've covered up. We you know there is a book out. I forget the uh, the author, but it's called Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. And it's, um, and it's and the book is instruction on how to get, get down into those deeper things because that's where sickness and disease come from. That's where poverty and lack come from. So the Lord initiated Tishri 10, Yom Kippur, to get at the root. That's what our whole ministry is about, getting to the root. One of our mentors said that his ministry, uh, Brother John and, and Sister Paula Sanford, said that their ministry is evangelizing the unbelieving heart. Mm -hmm of the believer. That's a profound statement. Mm -hmm. Evangelizing the unbelieving heart of the believer. Not the unbeliever, but the believer. And so Yom Kippur is a day where we examine the heart, where we repent of what's in our heart. The problem is, most of us, like the scripture that Naviah Leslie just read, most of us don't know what's in our heart. I, I dare to say all of us, because the scripture said that only God can know it. That's right. Okay? So this is a day where we spend all day, you know, digging, peeling back as many layers as we can not only for the past year, but for our lifetime. And even the lifetime of our ancestors, because that remains in our hearts as well. Their sins travel with us many times, even after redemption, even after we have given our life to Moshiach, given our life to Christ. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. But there are still consequences if we don't go deep into the heart, if we do not become transformed. This is a transformation process. Yom Kippur helps us remind us of that. And also, it is a cosmic opening with anointing and energy and blessings to help us go deeper in. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay? Now, I normally do this off camera, but I want to do it on camera today uh, because I want you to hear something, okay? Uh, let me start with this prayer. Baruch Atah, Yahweh, Eloheinu Melech, Ho'olam, Asher, Kitsunu, Omistatah, Vitzivano, Al Misfa, 
tzitzit v'shem Yeshua. Amin. Baruch Atah, Yahweh, Eloheinu, Malek, Ho'olam, Asher, Kitzanu, Omisvata, Vitzivanu, Al Misva, Urim, Thurim, Vishem Yeshua, Amin. And finally, Baruch Atah, Yahweh, Eloheinu, Malek, Ho'olam, Asher, Kitzanu, Omisvata, Vitzivanu, Al Misva, Shofar, Vishem Yeshua. Amen. And I did all of those other blessings to call the one for the Shofar to your attention. You know, on Yom Kippur, uh, I blow the Yemenite Shofar, which is from an African antelope. Very long thing. You seem, you know, kind of swirly or curly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But on Yom Kippur, I prefer to blow the actual ram's horns. And we're going to come on three times a day, and I'm going to blow with a different ram's horn each time. Okay? I actually have four. Okay? Oh, I believe this was the first, this was the first ram's horn mm -hmm. I think I had right here. Mm -hmm. Used it to cast out demons early on. Okay, now we're supposed to blow the ram's horn on the feast days and appointed times, on Shabbats and on new moons. Okay, it's an appointed time, so I'm gonna blow. You will hear a distinct difference in the ram's horn than in the shofar from the, you know, African antelopes. This sound will be more of a whine. We say a repentant sound. That's the reason why I'm using a ram horn. It sounds like I'm crying or whining. And we have the sound of repentance. So here I go. soundtrack how did that sound was it you know it was not like you wanted it it, all it was much, yeah. okay apologize uh you know for the sound we're going to uh when we come on at noon and at five we're going to switch the setup so that that sound doesn't get on your nerves right okay Sorry. i said it was supposed to be whiny but it shouldn't be like nails on a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. And this particular camera, for some reason, the microphone with it is um, bleh, okay? So, sorry about that, sorry. okay? That was some of the technical difficulty we were experiencing early on. And hate to be late, but couldn't help it. So, we'll have that worked out by the... Uh, afternoon and evening sessions. But let's get to a discussion about Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, or Yom Kippur. Okay. In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26, it says, How be it on the tenth day of this seventh month, is the day of atonement. There shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls, and you shall bring an offering 
made by fire unto God, and you shall do no manner of work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before Hashem, your Elohim. For whatsoever soul it be that does any manner of work in that same day, that soul will I destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It is a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of solemn rest. And you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day at the month at evening. From evening unto evening shall you keep your Sabbath. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of this holy word. Yeah. And may his meaning <coughs> and revelation <coughs> pick, poke, and penetrate my heart. Vishim Yeshua. Amen. Okay? So, that says it all. A day of solemn rest, a Sabbath, a day to afflict our souls, to fast. Amen. Amen. Now, in my definition, in my opinion, when you repent, what is one of the main things or qualities that someone should be able to detect, see, or hear, or discern in your repentance? Um, remorse. Yeah, that's the word, remorse. Or contrition. Okay. A contrite heart. You know, someone says, well, I'm sorry. No contrition there. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, you know, maybe they are, but the, it doesn't transmute contrition. You should come with a contrite heart. We should be able to discern it, detect it. What is the problem with that? A contrite heart. If you don't know what's in your heart, if you don't know the hidden darkness that lies within, how can you be contrite? You know, we can say, and Lord, I repent of all my sins. Please forgive me. And, you know, and, and we say, please forgive us for the sins of omission and commission. The ones that we committed that we know about and have knowledge of and the sins of omission, the ones that we don't know. We, we don't have the memory anymore. Maybe we never had the memory. It was never in our conscious mind. Maybe it is a sin of one of our ancestors, of our mother, our father, our grandparents, something coming down the generational lines. Because mm -hmm. it does. Even after you have accepted the Lord, the Adon, you know, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, it can still be coming down to you. Right. The Bible, you know, Sister Leslie and I were talking about this yesterday, and she said, well, you know, Vince, you shouldn't call anybody a bastard. And I said, well, I understand. I know there's an extreme negative connotation to that but the Bible calls them that and you know you have to be discerning because you want to reach people you don't want to turn them off we were talking about an individual who probably needs to hear it like that you know because he's perpetuating it through his generations he was of uh, illegitimate birth I, uh, I believe his father may have been also and now his first child, his son, is of illegitimate birth. So it's, it's going down through the bloodline. You know, the curse of the bastard. It says that a bastard 
cannot enter into the tent of meeting even unto the tenth generation. So his son now, his children, cannot enter into the covenant until ten generations. And then each generation where that sin is repeated, the curse gets carried on another ten generations. So it's until somebody stands in the gap and takes up the hedge and breaks that curse by not committing, you know, fornication and adultery, um, you know, not having sex outside of wedlock and marriage and children born under the covenant of matrimony, will they be able right. to, and when that says mm -hmm. enter into the tent of meeting, that means enter into covenant. Enter into full covenant where the, the full blessings are available to them. You know, they can uh, give their life to Moshiach, and God is trying to get that blessing to them, but that curse is there blocking it until they break that curse with deliverance and repentance. Amen. Amen. Yom Kippur. And they atone for their ancestors, for their father and mother who brought the curse, or their grandparents who brought the curse. So mm. that's why deliverance is so important. Even after you have uh, given uh, your life to Moshiach, to Christ, and named Yeshua or Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. You, that curse Hallelujah. still has to be broken. Amen. You still need a day of atonement. In the Christian faith, we call it Yom, not Yom Kippur, we call it deliverance. You still need the ministry of deliverance. The blood of Yeshua that was shed for you on the cross gives you the power to break the curse. Yes. Yes. Just because he shed his blood doesn't mean the curse is broken, even though you accept him. That's right. It has to be formally broken. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you may disagree, but I'll say this to you. Why take the chance? It's in the Bible. It's in, it's in Scripture. Okay. He said it. Why take the chance? Now, you know, we call our ministry at SIM Temple, we call it a healing and deliverance ministry, okay? Because healing can, uh, cannot occur until there is deliverance, until all of the curses are nullified. The word says that, and you can look this up for me, the word says that a curse without a cause will not come. Many of us are experiencing various sicknesses in our body. And it's because the curses have not been broken. The darkness in our heart has not yet been revealed. Something is still going on. Because we know the word of God is true. That's right. Look it up. Yeah, go ahead. For a curse without a cause will, not come. will right. not come or will not light. And sickness and disease is a curse. You cannot be sick. You hear me? Right. You cannot be sick unless there is a curse operating in your life. All sickness and disease is a curse. Well, what do you say? What about accidents? Proverbs 26, 2. Proverbs 26, 2. Go ahead and read it. Okay, got it. Nice and loud. It's in my, hold on. Proverbs 26. Verse if you two. Want to follow, you can follow. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so a curse causeless shall not come. A it. curse without a cause will not come. You cannot be walking down the street and some witch, warlock, or voodoo priestess put a curse on you just because they don't like you. 
-hmm. Can't happen. When Balaam tried to curse Israel, he had to go back and tell, you know, the king said, I cannot curse whom God has blessed. He was trying his best. He couldn't do it. A curse causeless will not come. Israel could not be cursed until they sin with the daughters of the Canaanites. Then he can go in and put a curse on. Mm -hmm. When you sin, then a curse can come. When you're disobedient, then a curse can come. Then you can get sick. Then you can have misery, poverty, and lack, emotional distress. But a curse causes will not come. It only comes from the enemy, from Hasatan, from the devil. And he has to have permission to touch you. Just like with Job. Job, you know, Father Abba Yahweh allowed Job to be tested to prove a point. But he had not, oh, what well, I can't, I won't say he had not sinned. Because the words, he said, what I have feared, the Job said, what I have feared the most has come upon me. He was in the sin of fear. That was his only sin. He was afraid that something bad might happen to him. That's a lack of faith. That was the only reason why God allowed him to be tested because it said he was a good man. He rejected evil. Mm -hmm. All right. But he had that fear in his heart for some reason. We get back to heart. Right. right. Now, <clears throat> I've been talking about heart and getting down to these deep issues so that you can be healed. You know, our ministry is all about healing and deliverance, okay? About getting you healed. So how do we do that? We have various techniques that we use. And they're all biblically based. And I'm going to talk about one of these major biblically based tools. In Revelation chapter 21, it says that no, there's going to be no more crying in New Jerusalem. Nothing that defiles can come into New Jerusalem. No more tears, no more crying, no more emotional distress, no sadness. And it is the crystals that help to keep this out. Remember the four walls are all made of the jasper crystal. Remember the 12 layers, the foundation, the foundations that the four walls sit upon of 12 crystals. And then the streets are layered with gold. Mm -hmm. Gold is a good transmitter of the anointing of Mm -hmm. The energy, anointing, power, whatever term you want to uh, apply to it, it helps to conduct, it conducts the anointing. It helps with that. Crystals conduct the anointing. They become a medium for the Holy Spirit to travel into or to travel through to come from God through the crystals to us. In Genesis chapter 2, there was gold and there was the onyx crystal in the rivers. In Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, it is a river of crystals that nourish the two trees of life on either side of that river. So crystals are an important aspect of healing 
emotional distress as well as organic body malfunctions that we call sickness and disease. Since today is a day of atonement, this is a day, this is a day where you got to come from the heart. You got to reach deep down and search your heart. And whatever you find, you should confess it and repent of it. Repent means turn from it, not on no more. Mm -hmm. Never again. I was listening to a song yesterday. I think I had Navi Leslie play it for me about two or three times because it caused my mind to drift and I wanted to focus on the word. And it kept saying over and over again, I'm never going back. I'm never going back. I'm never going back. And that was resonating in my spirit so so deeply and so heavily. You know, uh, I, I'm never going back. You know, I, 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 this is what I'm going to do mm -hmm. for the Lord from here on out. I'm, I'm, I'm turning my back on this. I'm never going back. You know, the first 10 days of Tishri are called the days of awe. The days where you are just in intense Repentance and, and, you know, and introspection. Introspection, retrospection, all of that. And so that song really resonated with me as we were driving through the mountains uh, yesterday. So, as you can see here, um, I have a lot of crystals that I have laid out. And the reason why I chose it, I have, or we have here, I say me, because, well, Sister Leslie picks a lot of them out too. But, you know, I'm the, I'm the tip of the spear <laughs> when it comes to getting our, our crystals. Or <clears throat> yeah. I say, I look, at, I look at our bank account and I go, uh-uh, I can't go nowhere near a crystal shop or a rock shop, as I call it sometimes. I got to stay far from it. You know, I said, uh, yeah, I said, uh -uh, I got to put on the brakes. And sometimes, uh, now Leslie Leslie will say, oh, let's stop at this particular shop. I say, are you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, uh, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not going to buy anything. And get in there. Next thing I know, we're a few hundred and sometimes a couple thousand dollars short. But it's all for the glory of God. It's all you know, I don't admire them for their beauty. I buy them for the anointing that's on them and the quality of the characteristic that it represents or the attribute that it, how should I, accentuates in our life. You know, does this look beautiful? Oh, that's heavy. You know, why would anyone just want to sit down and look at this? You know, it looks like, let's be honest with you, it looks like something you find uh, walking behind a cow in the field, you know, just <laughs> dumped and piled up. Okay. Well, you want to tell them what it is? Yeah, I am. I'm okay. going gonna to okay. go through them all. These crystals that I have here, all help with various aspects of heart energy. They help to reveal what's in the heart. They get rid of energetic blockages that are in the heart that prevent that memory from breaking through Amen. so that it can be, so that the light of God can shine on it and eradicate it. Amen? Amen. Okay. And they do that in various ways. Each one does it a little differently than the other. But they're all heart energy. There are, there are many others that are heart energy. These are the most, I would say, the most common the ones used most often um, in 
in ministry. The first one is called a rose quartz. A rose quartz. And that is are these over here, these pink rose color. A rose quartz. And you can see I have them in various um, shapes and uh, forms. I also have right here, I have rose quartz shaped like uh, pyramids, like two pyramids shaped. And there's a reason for the shapes. And here we have an obvious shape. I'll hold that up here. Very tall. It's about, oh, 14 to 16 inches from the tip to here, 16 or 18. I also have a cube in rose quartz. And then I have, I was trying to get it's, it's shaped so it'll tilt on its side, but I can't get it to do it right now. I also have here on the end, ow, this is rose quartz as you would find it in a mine. This is raw rose quartz. This is a spear, you know, of rose quartz. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a special one. It's more expensive than the, uh, the average rose quartz because it is, uh, what is it called? I'll, I'll, I'll tell them in a minute. When you look at it, if you look at it in the right light, it produces a hologram or a halo around it. And it forms, or they call it a star rule. It forms a, you know, it will have one line going around, then it'll have another line intersecting that line perpendicularly, and then it might have even another line, depending on the quality, and it makes a star. Let me see if I could get it to do it. I don't think you could in this see light. it on the camera. You won't be able to see it, but I, you know. It has to be right under the light. Yeah, right under the light or in or the, the right angle or whatever right okay but in a certain light you can see it and sometimes i will get it and turn it so that it is you know doing that and do my prayers and meditations and glancing at that star that says to uh that quality is a, a high quality of rose quartz and it is said to have more power, more anointing, more intensity if you have a star rose quartz. You know. Okay. If any of you uh, want to go out and get a star rose quartz, I'm going to say, do, I, do I see it from here? No, I don't. Um, you have to ask by that. You're not just going to pick one up and because, believe me, the dealers you know, they examine what they have before they sell it. And you're going to pay dearly for a star rose quartz. You know, some of them, like, they have four lines in a section. They have, you know, one, two, three, four. And you can see that thing like, woo. And it's a halo mm -hmm. around it. Very intense. I would say to you, a lot of people ask me, well, which, or, you know, one of the most common questions when people begin to um, collect crystals for healing, for meditation, and that sort of thing, and worship, they say, well, which crystals, you know, because there are literally hundreds, maybe thousands of different crystals out mm -hmm. there. They say, which ones should I get? I would say probably the first or the second crystal that you should purchase is a rose quartz. The first is maybe uh, a clear quartz crystal. I don't, mm -hmm. clear quartz crystals uh, activate all seven chakras. There's one right behind it. Oops. I can, I, I think I can get it. 
I can get I can twist. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Here, you want me to help? Don't drop, don't drop, don't drop. Don't drop it. Don't drop. Let me come, come. Let me come. come. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Stay there a second. I'm going to show it. I want you to put it there. This is called a, a clear quartz cluster. This is what is in, in all your electronics. You know, without this, your watches, your telephones, and your computers don't work. Plain and simple. Clear quartz. Okay? They transmit energy and anointing. Clear quartz being one of the best. And it activates. This cleanses all the other crystals. This never has to be cleansed or recharged, as they say. And it activates and enhances all other crystals. And that's called a cluster. I have that in spears, in, in all kinds of shapes. Hand me this one here. This? Okay. Right here, right? Yeah. This is another clear quartz. You can see this one is a little bit more brilliant. It has the Lemurian pattern. Yeah. This is called a Lemurian quartz. It is said that it, you know, that the the groove, the waves, the natural waves of it on the side, you can't see them, but you feel it. It says that it acts like a barcode. It will actually reveal certain things. Okay. Put that one back. And give me the, the other one up there. The more shaped. Yeah, the one right next to it there. This is a standard clear quartz crystal. Has a little is terminated, has a little bit of, of a point up there. This is regular, just plain ordinary clear quartz. Okay? Let's put that back. But getting back to rose quartz and the heart, that is, those are the two first crystals that you, you want to buy. Okay, uh, perhaps you would buy the um, the clear quartz. Now that Lemurian quartz that I showed you, that's expensive. That's a specialized quartz. You don't, you wouldn't, you could start with it, but if you're budget conscious, like most of us, you know you'll want to get the basics first. But you would buy a clear quartz crystal, a rose quartz, and after that, the rose quartz is heart, the heart chakra, heart energy. The clear quartz activates all of the chakras, all seven. The next one that you would get, and you come over here, I'll, I'll show them a little bit. What is, isn't it one sitting right up there? Which one? Yeah, right here, here's one. Okay, this is an amethyst, purple. This is a little shape. You can show them that other one too. The one that's around? Yeah, that's an amethyst. It's been polished and kind of sharpened. This one needs to be clean, it's kind of dusty. Okay. It's not really shiny. This is called an amethyst geo. See the back of that rock? People who know, they go out to the mountains and they find a big round rock and they, bam, crack it open. And this is what's inside. This reminds me like looking into the universe or a galaxy, okay? You can't see the brilliance and how it reflects the light on here, okay? You would get an amethyst in any shape. You can get them, these things, you can have them as small as the tip of your finger, like a little pebble. Or you can, you, you can get them as literally as large as you, if you want to. But that's what, you know, the first two or three that I would purchase. And, you know, the amethyst represents the crown chakra, the highest chakra. Then the heart, very important, and that clear quartz, which activates everything. Um, here, you know, the breastplate of the high priest. Remember, this is the day, the only day of the year 
where the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. If you went in on any other day, he would drop dead. He could only go in on this day into the Holy of Holies or else he would just drop dead. If he had sin in his life, he would drop dead in there. And anybody who went in there to get him to pull him out would also drop dead. They would attach, uh, you know, this is where the uh, expression lifeline comes from. They would tie a rope around his ankle or maybe around his waist. And remember the priestly garments had little bells at the edge of the skirt. And if they didn't hear those bells jingling, you know, while he's in there atoning, you know, pouring out the blood on the mercy seat or whatever, uh, maybe burning incense. Or, uh, I don't know if he burned incense in the Holy of Holies or if that was in the Holy Chamber outside the veil. Remember, the veil were a series of cursed curtains that you had to zigzag into to get into the Holy of Holies. It separated the holy chamber from the holy of holies. And if they didn't hear those pomegranates, those bells at that skirt jiggling, they would give that rope a little tug. And if they get didn't get, you know, after a couple of tugs, if they didn't get a tug back, they would say, oh, well, you know, man down, lost another one. And that would mean that he was not he was not pure. He had some unconfessed sin in his life that he had not repented of. Everybody says it wasn't that he had to have not committed any sins, but he had to have repented of them. He had to have confessed them. Else he would drop dead. If he had, you know, uh, known sin and refused, not unknown sin, not generational issues, but unknown sin, I mean, but known sin that he was keeping a secret, mm. you know, he would drop dead on Yom Kippur, the day of repentance. So it is very dangerous. Okay? It is dangerous. You may not drop dead today, but something in your life is going to drop dead today if you don't, if you know it and don't confess it and don't repent of it. Something in your life today, maybe it's in your finances, maybe it's in your health, something in your emotional life, something will drop dead today if you don't confess it and repent of it. Known sin, not unknown, but known sin. Something you don't want to give up. Something you want to keep on doing. Ooh, mm -hmm. scaring myself. I'm, I'm serious. Lord have mercy, have mercy. Okay? Something that you refuse to give up. Something that you have said, well, you know, uh, I can't do it. You know, I, I, that's a little too hard. All right. That's causing the death in something. Over time. <coughs> Over water. I was wondering if you it will cause the death in you. waiting on that water. <clears throat> the enemy doesn't like me letting you know that. Okay. I was just doing some research about... Um, Speak up so we can hear you. Jacob. 
I was just doing, you know, the stones that he laid under his head. Right. When he was headed toward her run. Mm hmm. Dream. You're gonna start talking, then you're gonna walk yeah, off. Water. Sorry. You get some water for I'm yourself. <laughs> I don't know what your point was. I mean, uh, you well, finish it. You said you did some research. We were talking about it before how Jacob was headed toward her and he came upon a certain place. You're, you're too late. Oh, yeah. He came you're upon a certain from place. Behind the camera. Okay. Yeah, he Go said, ahead. came upon a certain place. Jacob came in Genesis 28. <clears throat> where he used the stones for his pillow. Right. And a certain place that he came upon was headed toward Haran. And I was seeing if I could find that place. I'm sure it's near Turkey. Um, and trying to... It tells you exactly where it is. It does? It says yeah. toward, he was headed toward Haran and he came upon a certain yeah, place. Yeah, he was close to... What is um, uh, Beth... Um, the house of bread? Um, Beth... Now he out he came out from Beersheba and he went toward Haran and he lighted upon a certain place. This is you know Genesis twenty eight verse ten. Mm -hmm. And he came upon a certain place. It doesn't say where, but it was headed toward Haran, coming out of Beersheba. It was a mountainous area. There were mountains. Okay. So that's why <clears throat> those stone he, he easily found those crystals. Right. Um uh use the, the rocks for a pillow is a Hebrew idiom for taking crystals and placing them around your head for protection or for revelation of your dreams or to have your heart be revealed in the dream okay. which is what happened or for vision and he saw Jake was called Jacob's ladder right the angels ascending ascending and descending okay now, getting uh, back, I'm going to look this up real quick. Taking more time than I, where we started late. I'm taking more time than I thought. So I may only do two crystals now. What time is it? 1036. 1036, oh, okay. See that over there. I may do two now and then I have a total of see. I have rose quartz, I have jade, I have malachite, amazonite. Yeah, I just let me rhodochrosite, rhodonite. Let me stop talking. <laughs> okay, quartz, quartz. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Must be under rose, okay. Okay, four, four. Rose quartz. going to read you a little bit about it. Um, rose quartz to me is probably the most important crystal to have because it deals with the heart and in oriental medicine the heart plays the song for all of the other internal organs. The Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The heart determines the overall health 
of all of the other internal organs, depending on the note. You know, the Oriental medicine talks about the song of the heart. If it's playing or the note or frequency, I really should say, the frequency and vibration that is going into the heart. One frequency will cause the kidneys to malfunction, another the liver, another one, another internal organ, and so on and so on. Or the right note will bring healing into a particular organ. I've been telling you, if you've been following us, we, you know, especially in the last month or so, and on uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah, about in Oriental medicine, the heart kidney axis and how important it is to your overall health, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. The heart kidney axis. And how Rosh Hashanah is actually a feast day to heal the kidneys. The listening of the shofar heals the kidneys. The 100 blasts of the shofar is for the kidneys on, on Rosh Hashanah. And I explain all that. I don't have time to get into it. Go back and listen to the Rosh Hashanah broadcast uh, last week and then listen to uh, some of the broadcast and uh, teachings before that, uh, the Torah portions in Deuteronomy. And, you know, You'll, un you'll understand what I'm talking about. Just this morning, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that Yom Kippur, just as Rosh Hashanah heals the kidneys, what does Yom Kippur heal? When does Yom Kippur heal? Mm -hmm. Take a guess. The revelation just came to me this morning. Never so thought of it before. There's one specific thing. Huh? You're saying there's one specific thing? There's one specific, specific, specific organ that Yom Kippur the, the observance heals. of Yom Kippur heals. There's a special anointing. I would have to say the heart. You're absolutely right. Okay. <laughs> that seems so easy, right? right? You just said the heart. Why? I've been celebrating the feast days now um, about 17 years. Why is it it took 17 years for me to get the revelation that Yom Kippur heals the heart. I do not know. But this is a feast day for the healing of the heart. Remember, I've been preaching to you for the last two, three months and longer about what's called in Oriental medicine, the heart kidney axis. Mm -hmm. And what is represented in that. So the first feast day of the new year is for the kidneys. The second appointed time is for the heart. So like I said, I have all of these crystals out here that deal with heart energy. I'm going to jump around and, okay, rose quartz. I'll start. I'll start to rose quartz. And mem I'm not going to talk about what it looks like, you know, the um, from a geological standpoint, okay? From a not archaeological. What do you call the people who study rocks and rock formations? Geologists. Yeah, thank you. I'm like totally got okay. my mind blank. All right. Oh rose quartz is the quintessential stone of love. Love for oneself, one's life, partner, children, family, friends, community, the earth, the universe, and the divine meditating. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna have to get some new glasses. And the divine. Meditating with one of these stones. Meditating or praying. Praying in the spirit. 
meditating with one of these stones provides an envelope of love energy around oneself and activates heart chakra for the emanation of one's innate love. When one is truly experiencing love, one is not thinking about giving and receiving because the lover and the beloved have become one. Rose quartz helps dissolve one's boundaries of isolation and mistrust and moves one into the sense of union with the all that is the essence at the core of the heart. And what is it's the quintessential stone of love. What is God? Love. love. What is Yeshua? Love. Yeah. You know, those people say, well, you know, all you need is Yeshua. Okay, here he is. <laughs> Here's Yeshua. Right there. Yeshua made all there is. According to Colossians chapter 1, everything that is made is made by him. Everything that was ever made was made by him, by him, for him, through him, out of him. Yes. Amen. I think I want you to come read this because I, I want to hold up the, near the courts. Sure. Grab your to leave there. This one is so important. I think it needs to be read. And right here, healing the heart of his wounds, right there. You have okay. to cover your head. Oh, impressive. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, healing the heart of his wounds and reawakening its trust is one of Rose Quartz gifts. Mm. Its soothing vibrations are a balm to the emotions. Did you hear me? A mm. balm to the emotions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they calm and cleanse the entire auric field. Everybody has auras and chakras. Yeah. It's not just a new age term. It is actual metaphysical reality. You can't see this, it unless you have a terminal on camera. The, some people can see it. Right. The Some people be, yeah, your eyes. shape, the spear, emits that energy in a circular form. So this is excellent to hold around your heart right. and meditate or do your, your, your Qigong exercises where you're just breathing, emptying your mind and breathing, or you know, whatever prayer you you know you're praying, prayers, you're praying for your children, you're praying love. Okay. Yes, and she was excellent focused. for that. She was always a focus when we do all of this. Okay, go ahead. So, all right, so it calms and cleanses the entire auric field. It engenders the release of tension and stress. The dissolution of anger and resentment, the dispelling of fear and suspicion, and the rebirth of hope and faith in the benevolence of the universe. Hmm. Keep reading. Keep on. Rose Quartz. You can read all of it. Okay, Rose Quartz is clearly feminine in tone, and it's one of the stones of the great Mother Earth. It, it, it not only activates the human heart chakra. It also links one's personal heart to the heart of the earth and say the heart of God. Let me say something about that relating to the heart of the earth. Now that sounds, that's what it is. Uh, that sounds like new age teaching or terminology. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Here is the biblical terminology. God formed man from the dust of the ground, from the dust of the earth. So it's nothing unbiblical about that. This helps us reconnect to that where we came from. We're a part of it. As Einstein said in his law of um, dynamic entanglement, quantum entanglement, where they take a photon of light, mm -hmm. okay, and they split it. 
Then they miles away. They put one photon over here and one photon over there. Whatever they do to this one happens to this one simultaneously. Whatever they do to this one happens to the other one simultaneously. This is biblical. This is, I'm getting into another teaching there. But just um, if you got a question about that, you know, email me or call me or something, you know. Go ahead. Okay. So not only activates the human heart chakra, it also links one's personal heart to the heart of the earth and the heart of the Lord, the creator. It's love vibrations. It says the universe here. It's love vibrations can penetrate down to the cellular level. It, here, again, that. <laughs> that, that's, woo, that, that. This love vibration penetrates down to your cellular, cellular, cellular level. level and reprogramming the cells for joy, so the body, the cells that formed your whole being. It, it penetrates the energy, the anointing, penetrates down to the cellular level and what? For joy. For joy. And longevity. And longevity. Rather than despair and death. Did you catch that? You know, reprograms the cells for joy. Longevity gets it cleanses it gets the hurt and pain out it makes the heart sing a song a different you know i say sing a song a different vibration mm -hmm. okay keep going this reprogramming capacity is the source of the healing potential of rose quartz say that again now this reprogramming reprogramming capacity is the source of the healing potential mm -hmm. of the rose quartz <laughs> The rose quartz is now is one of the most important stones to wear, using in meditation, sleep, body layouts, and keeping in one's environment. Placing a good-sized chunk of rose quartz in each room of one's house can fill the entire structure with its gentle energies, keeping the energy of love in focus for all who live there. Earlier this year, or last year, last year, at the beginning of last year, the Holy Spirit told me, to make an arc of the heart, I mean an arc of the, the house, transform the house and Etiam Temple and the Energy Center into an arc of love and protection. And it instructed me to buy, you want to run and grab, just right over, just grab that little piece little right tiny, over there. Tiny stone. Okay. What I did to do that, and I used a couple other stones in there, but mainly I used rose quartz to make this art. Or now in New Age, you'll hear it called a grid. But the Holy Spirit told me to make an art, call it an arc. Okay? I took, I used a little round pieces in different shapes. Some of them are round. Some of them are oval shaped. They're about the same size. I put in every corner of the house, on the first floor and the second floor, I put one of these in every corner of the house, the footprint of the house, the perimeter. All. I remind you that he has anointed. Did you say that already? How you blessed anointed each one, so his anointing. No, I have. I have. Dedication and consecration on these stones, yeah. marking the territory. I pray and, over them. I anoint them uh, with with oil, uh, and pray over them before I disperse them. All right. And I believe it prepares a wall, a spiritual wall, that you yeah. cannot penetrate. And it creates a network throughout the house. Mm -hmm. Not only, you know, we, we got two floors here, two levels. Not only creates a network around the perimeter of the first floor and then doing the same thing for the second floor, but it also creates a network upward so that the one in this corner is now connected to the one on the first floor corner. And it makes all kinds of geometric patterns, squares, um, rectangles, various shapes and patterns. Can't even go into what all of them are. 
you know, almost like when you wire your house, the wiring in your house. Mm -hmm. And I have one of these in every corner. And a couple of, I think, in the, I even did it in the garage. I think in the garage, I use a smaller piece of the raw quartz crystal, you know, something yeah. more durable. We have a raw piece over here as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I have it every room. Then in the bedrooms and the bathrooms, I put it in every corner of the bedrooms, every corner of the bathroom. I got it in the shower. I made another inner network inside the bedrooms and the bathrooms to go inside the, um, the footprint mm -hmm. or the outer layer using quartz. So at all times, this is reprogramming, reprogramming the cells of our body always acting on our heart to help us reveal love. And we noticed that when we did it, uh, especially in the bedroom, man, did we start to dream. Oh, yeah. Almost immediately. Almost, I mean, just vivid, colorful dreams. Once we, once we did that. And there's a couple of, uh, in the bedrooms, or in our bedroom at least, I put uh, in that grid, in that outline, uh, I put a, a piece of selenite, uh, of um, clear quartz, and um, what's called terminally, you know, for negativity. So all of that is in that network. Mm -hmm. And then we are a crystalline being. We become a part of that network. We become a part of that grid. You know, we transmute that and conduct that as well. And I even took it and put it in our truck. I put two up mm -hmm. on top of the dash and two, we drive a Suburban, and, says, and two in the back. It says it can, it says that if you continue, for one's meditation or sleeping room, a war's course in every corner is not overdoing it. So yeah, every corner. It's so, and you this one, I have on where Leslie types up the reports, I've got it sitting right there on the table, as well as one in every corner of that room. But this sits right behind the computer yeah. while she's typing. That's beautiful. Okay. Okay. All right, go Does ahead. that work? A rose quartz around one's neck or one's desk can keep one's interactions with others in the highest possible state of harmony. <laughs> You got it. You made a mistake. What? <laughs> when you type it. Oh, that's good. Both quartz can stimulate the crown chakra, third eye, and throat chakra, bringing them into harmony and unity with the heart. Even the lower chakras respond favorably to the abundance of love energy, which flows from the heart under the influence of rose quartz. The stone is ideal to give to anyone, even strangers, as talismans of love. Rose quartz stones can spread compassion and gentle understanding throughout the world. When one gifts a lover or a friend, a stranger or a child with a rose quartz, there is an unspoken appreciation that re reverberates throughout the universe as one more boundary is softened or dissolved even. So all forms of rose quartz emanates the same essential energies, but the clusters of prismatic rose quartz, I think that's what that spear was, a prismatic rose quartz crystal, are more powerful for their size than any other variety. The clearer and deeper colored rose quartz is usually considered more powerful than the material that is opaque and pale. So the spear, I believe, is one of those prismatic... It's a little deeper. It's... Prismatic deeper, type, deeper colored rose point, compared to this lighter colored right. one. Okay, so star rose quartz combines the love energies for which the stone is known with the electric intensity of rutile. The star rose quartz accelerates this one. and magnifies the effects of rose quartz and it is an excellent gift for the jump starting romance. Jump starting a romance. Hmm. Ask God for you, mate. Don't 
don't, don't get carried away with all you know every little thing okay. in there. But it, it, it you know it, it's love, so whatever. Yeah. But don't think you're gonna find a mate because you're wearing a rose quartz necklace now. Uh, right. Okay. You want me to read all of this, or that's good? No, read it. You just up to here. Oh, this too. Yeah, go all ahead. This. So rose quartz harmonizes with most heart stones, including rhodonite, which we have here. Which one is rhodonite? Um, yeah, this is rhodonite. Okay. It's dark and black. You can see pink. pink in it. Yep, and the pink's calcite. Calcite. Rhodonite. That's right, right. I'll talk about that later today. Pink uh, tourmaline and rhodochrosite. This is rhodochrosite here. Okay. All right. Morganite. I think we have morganite. Which I don't have any. We did. You know. Emerald and sesaborite garnet. Don't have that either. Moldavite activates rose quartz capacity to affect spiritual transformation through the power of love. Phenakite. We Natural have Mononite and Phenakite. Scolocyte enhances one's ability to use rose quartz as a window to divine love. Now, other notes in these books are from other people. Uh, I don't know whether Naisha. Uh, That's one of the authors. Uh, okay. It says, don't let the soft pink color and, some, and soothing energy of this stone fool you into discounting its power. Rose quartz is one of the most important stones of our time. It stimulates and opens the heart chakra and clears the emotional body, assists in the integration and resolution of old emotional programs. Rose quartz is one of the most powerful stones for the activation of the human crystal, our bodies, human crystal, precisely because of its heart healing properties. As we, as we evolve into a new paradigm, our energetic center is moving from the hara point below the navel to the heart chakra. As this shift takes place, it's highly important to clear and strengthen this chakra. The, the heart center is the strongest generator of light energy in the body. So I you know, have to have your heart transformed in the likeness of Yeshua, the light of the world. The magnetic field, now this is a science, generated by the heart is far more powerful than the brain waves that are generated from the brain. This is a much more powerful magnetic field that encompasses the body. Mm -hmm. So this, that's, you just said it, you, you like remembered everything in this book, and strengthening, um, Stronger than the brain. So the energy of the rose quartz helps the bud of the heart unfold into a thousand petaled lotus of light. I'd say the, the light of Yeshua. You we weren't focusing on Yeshua, but we're doing this. We, we're, we know the light of the world. There's, there's no greater love than he who lays down his life for his brother. It's Yeshua who is the perfect, perfect love. So we follow that and we meditate. And that is, it actually helps you. These actually help you when you meditate to transform your heart into the light of Yeshua. So the heart center, so I'm just going to read like I got that. Meditation with gross quartz can assist one in reaching resonance with the frequency of compassion, releasing emotional patterns that are keeping one stuck and embracing higher and finer frequencies of light. When I say light, you're thinking Yeshua. Rose quartz can vibrationally support the energetic stabilization of the physical heart as it shifts to match the increasing frequency of the planet. It can aid those experiencing palpitations or skipped heartbeats, irregular heartbeats or heart rhythm or emotional distress due to these energetic changes. It is a wonderful stone of protection for children as it is as its strong heart energy transforms negativity into compassionate understanding. Now the spiritual connotation, they have the spiritual connotation, emotional and physical, and af the affirmation at the end. So the spiritual says, Rose Quartz is one of the most humble yet most powerful of the spiritual allies. It turns the heart toward love and bathes body, mind, and spirit in that healing and enlightening frequency. It carries the loving consciousness of the Christ and other heart-centered spiritual masters. Emotional, rose quartz is calming for the mind, assisting one in releasing worry, fear, anxiety, and past emotional trauma. 
Hmm. It clears the emotional body of ego-driven patterns and can help one feel more open to receiving and sharing love, compassion, and kindness. In the physical, rose quartz is a gentle stabilizing stone to use for, a, for physical heart trauma and imbalance. It can help the heart make the shift from stress-based physiology to the higher frequencies of love-based physiology. It is ideal for premature babies and young children with heart weaknesses or disease that can be used by anyone who needs a stronger, more stable heart, which is everyone. <laughs> Read that again about um, love-based love -based physiology. Okay. It can help the heart make the shift from stress-based physiology to the higher frequencies of love-based physiology. And we're talking about the frequencies. You know that the vibrational frequency, the higher it is, the healthier you are now for those of you who don't think that a stone or a rock has a frequency it does that's scientific that's that some you. some rocks are what we call radioactive like uranium mm -hmm. and they can kill you over time some stones have a frequency that can heal you like a rose quartz so this that's scientific Everything, all of these things have different frequencies. All of the various stones mm -hmm. and crystals I have here have their own frequencies. And these frequencies physically, organically accomplish certain things in your body and in your emotions, which affects your spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, so you've got it. That's it? Yes, yeah, the, the last is the affirmation. So you say an affirmation. You modify that affirmation for your heart. Whatever you want. I open Whatever my heart to receive and express the energy of love. Whatever, you know. Whatever you want to add, express the heart you, you, of Yeshua. You would, do your, I, my heart would be that. I open my heart to receive and express the heart of Yeshua. Okay. So with the reading of that, I, I want you to end with a prayer. Okay. Okay. And, and, and prayer books here? Yeah, right there. The first one. I think it's on. I can't keep this on. And the uh, spiritual warfare one? Mm hmm. Just pop out that first one. Right here, right? Mm hmm. Not really a prayer, it's an affirmation. Yeah, that's why it's because okay. you just talked about the affirmation. Okay, trilogy of peace and love, the one principle of love. Yes. Just read that okay. page front and back, Ready. and tell you what. Yes. You want to hold, hold the spear. You want to hold this. What do you? I want to hold my sword. Want to hold this is sword. the first Selenite sword we have with my rose quartz merkaba and the jade. Two different types of jade, right? Two different, and um, I'm going to talk about jade at twelve. So okay, for the sake of time. Selenite is, this is not clear crystal, it's selenite. It's a crystal that harmonizes and unifies um, and ampl amplifies as well whatever you place on it. So this selenite in the form of a sword, so you can direct the energy, will harmonize these two types of jade which are heart energy as well. And of course, we just talked about the energy of the Rose Quartz, uh, the Rose Quartz Merkaba or Star David. Okay? So this is a penetrate to the heart. If she points that out and towards you, the screen, you, uh, you're receiving it. Receive, open your heart, and receive the love of heart of Yeshua. Okay. Be transformed. All right, so this is Rabbi Vince's Seven Principles for Victory in the Battlefield of Your Mind and Manifesting Your Desires in the Earth Realm. If you'd like a copy of this, please contact us at simhealing at gmail.com. We'll give you a copy. It's also, I think, on our website, simhealing.com. So you can go there and check it out. All right. For in Him, Yeshua HaMashiach, we live and move and have our being. Acts 17:28. And what is... The exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. 
according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, he yes. set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Therefore we are co seated with Christ, far above princi all principalities and powers and might and dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put forth, put all things under his feet, yes, Lord. and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that fills all in all, Ephesians 1, 19-23. Next is 1 Corinthians 2, 16. Remember, this is for the principles for the victory in the battlefield of your mind. Or your heart. heart. Right. <laughs> so, for who has known the mind of the Lord, mm. that he may instruct him, but he has, but we have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through yes, the pulling Lord. down of strongholds, you recite your strongholds here. This is in your meditation. You recite your strongholds right there. Casting. What you want to be cleared yes. from your heart. And the Rose Quartz helps you uh, yes. clear that along with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Casting down imagination to every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians again, 10, 3 through 5. Next, for as he thinketh in his heart and mind, mm -hmm. so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. For out of the abundance of the heart and mind, the mouth Ooh. speaks. Remember, the abundance of your heart, the mm. mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of your heart and your mind. The mouth See how speaks. important this stone is. Out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh and creates whatever you speak. Amen. Go ahead. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart or mind mm -hmm. brings forth good things. And mm -hmm. an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart or mind brings forth evil things. Matthew 12, 34 and 35. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart mm -hmm. or mind. Psalms 37, 4. Backside. side. Now this next, on the other side, sorry, you can't see that over there, it is called the One Principle of Love, and then I'll read what Rabbi Vince collaborated on, the Trilogy of Peace. There's a three um, powerful I verses with the Holy Spirit. for the Holy Spirit. I wrote Trilogy all of these. Peace, Shalom. Okay. Yes, he did. Well, it's a scripture, but you, you had the revelation of putting those three together for the fold cord is hard to break. Mm -hmm. So it's a trilogy of peace, and you recite these and meditate on these, you will have peace. So the one principle of love, Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. We know this. this everyone could even guess this scripture. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You do those things and you're in harmony with the law and the prophets. Matthew 22, 37, 40-40. Now the trilogy of peace. For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it you take it patiently? This is the acceptable, this is acceptable with God. This is your heart acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example mm. that ye shall follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. Amen. And when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. 1 Peter 2, verses 20 to 23. When I did prison ministry, I taught that scripture every time I went. Yes. This helps you do Absolutely. what that scripture said. Yes, it's the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit uses this as a conduit to our anatomy. Yes. 
Amen. Right. Amen. That's true, because in prison, they're all there mostly because they reviled. Mm -hmm. They didn't know peace. They struck back. Yes. That's what I used to tell them. Number two. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Second Timothy 2, 23-26 the third, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of Christ, of knowledge of God, Yahweh, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patient and long suffering with joyfulness. Colossians 1, 9 through 11. Mm -hmm. Amen. All heart center. You can put that back in. Okay. I want to close with taking Holy Communion. And then I am going to do a meditation with you and exercise to activate the heart chakra so that for the rest of the day you can um, come from the heart do your repentance from the heart and this will bring up things that will help to bring up things that um, you know promote your repentance Amen. okay Abba Yahweh, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, Ruach HaKadosh, come down in power upon the elements of the Holy Communion table. Fill the unleavened bread with your body. Fill the cup of the fruit of the vine with your blood and the essence thereof. And let the shofar sound of the voice of your blood be heard throughout our entire triune being. Because in Revelations chapter 1, Verse 10, it says that your voice is as the sound of a mighty shofar. And in Hebrews chapter 12, 24, it says that your blood speaks, but it speaks a better thing than the blood of Abel. Let the shofar sound of the voice of your blood be heard in the right hemisphere of our brain, in the left hemisphere of our brain, in the area of our brain called the amygdala, which is, which is the seat of our emotions mm -hmm. and controls our endocrine system. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let it be heard in our hippocampus and hypothalamus, yes, where our memories are formed. Let it be heard throughout every neural pathway in our brain. Yes. Let it be heard in every synaptic recess, along every axon, along inside of every dendrite. Let it form new neural pathways in our brain yes. that lead to total shalom and ahava in you. Oh, love yeah. and peace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let it be heard in the penile gland of our brain which is responsible for our dream life and sleep life, Lord, which connects us with you. Let it be heard, Lord, in the pituitary gland in our brain, Lord, that controls the hormonal secretions of all our internal organs of our endocrine system. Let it be heard there, right behind what we call the third eye or the sixth chakra and the pineal gland controlling the seventh chakra. Let it be heard in our thyroid glands, Lord. Yes. Thank you. which is the next chakra. Let it be heard in the thalamus, Lord, of our God. The upper heart. Did I say that right? Thalamus? Is it thalamus? I don't think it's... I believe it's thalamus. Okay. Which controls our endocrine system. Let it be heard in that gland, Lord. 
Let it be heard, Lord, in our the adrenal glands on our kidneys, Lord. Let the shofar sound of the voice of your blood be heard there, Lord. Let it be heard, Lord, in our stomachs, Lord. Let it be heard in the womb of every woman and in the loins of every man, Lord. Let it be heard from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord, down to the very marrow of our bones, where our immune system is formed and distributed, Lord. Let it be heard saying, Shalom, be still. Yes. Sir. Let it be heard all the way down to the cellular level, all the way down to our DNA, even into the atomic level, Lord. Let the shofar sound of the voice of your blood be heard, saying, Peace be still. Yes. Lord said on that faithful night, is it easier to say, rise, take up thy bed and walk, or thy sins be forgiven thee? Mm-hmm. He also said that this is my blood, which is shed for the remission of your sins. That means this is a cup of healing. Because if you have no sins, you have no curse. You have no sickness or disease. This is a cup of healing. This is a day of healing. Healing of the heart. After he had sold down and sucked, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body, which is broken, that yours may be whole. And this blood is shed for the remission of your sins and the establishment of the new covenant, the brick Kadashah, the body and blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. Thymus gland. I knew <laughs> thalamus. Thalamus was in the in the brain. Exactly. I knew it wasn't thalamus. That was right. <laughs> that's what I repeat. And the thymus that's thymus. called the high heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now for those who say, Oh, where's crystals at in the Bible and all that? You know, the breastplate of the high priest, through my research, it had an amber stone, a jasper. Citrine, which you've heard me talk a lot about, lapis lazuli, carnelian, malachite, which we have here, this hard energy, mm-hmm. turquoise, black onyx, ruby, garnet, blue lace agate, and amethyst. Okay? By some accounts, we don't know 100% for sure, but by uh, many accounts, that is the 12 stones that were in the blessed prayer of the high priest that was sit and go. I'm waiting for your donations to come in so I can have these sit and go. But those are the stones that are inside uh, my pouch here in case you've been wondering. Okay? Now, I want to do a heart activation. I'm going to use um, Navia Leslie swords to do this. Okay. Since we're doing a heart activation, she has two swords, I have two swords. Okay. She has two types of jade on hers, plus the Merkaba here, the rose quartz Merkaba, mounted on the selenite. This one. How do you pronounce this one again? Amazonite. Amazonite. That's my Amazonite. Which Mark also well. help with heart energy and also a piece of jade, which also, this jade is, some call it um, purple jade. It, if I took these bands off of it the, that are holding it to the selenite, it, you will see like Green, uh, a vibe, like a rainbow of very faint colors. And, 
move it around in different light also to help with heart energy now i'm going to take these and i'm pointing them down at your feet and i'm sending out first center yourself in your heart meditate on feeling everything in your heart physical emotional or whatever just put all of your awareness in your heart and we are going to use our ability as trans-dimensional beings as multi-dimensional beings because we're here on earth but we're also co-seated with moshiach in the heavenly places at the right hand of power amen so we are in two places at once here on earth in Mount Hood, the kingdom, and also in the heavenlies. And as we do that, I point these at your feet. Remember, as Catholics like to say, we are dust, and dust we shall return. We are connected to the earth. Yep. So we're meditating on drawing energy up from the earth into the soles of our feet, in the kidney one point, into our legs, into our torso, into our heart. And we let that energy come from the earth into our feet, legs, thighs, and torso, and we let it explode into our heart. And the swords help pull that energy out. Since we are multidimensional beings, we are also pulling up at the same, uh, simultaneously, we are pulling energy up from the foundations of New Jerusalem, from the 12 foundations of crystals, from the gold, into our feet as we are co-seated with Mashiach at the right hand of power, far above all principalities and powers and wickedness and high praises. Because what is above is more powerful than what is beneath. And we're pulling that energy Amen. that is in the foundations of New Jerusalem into our heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we want to pull down that energy in New Jerusalem down into the crown chakra, into the pineal gland, down into our heart, and let that energy from New Jerusalem meet and collide with the energy of the earth in our heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And now, we want to send that heart energy around the world. We connect ourselves to Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we each are in that connection, in that circuitry. And we send that energy out of our left hand, out, as it goes around the world to everyone who is listening and meditating on this, out of our heart to our left hand, through our left sword. Amen. Now we will send the energy out to our right hand through the sword around the world to everyone listening. And we let that energy Connect the left with the right around the world into our hearts and exploding into our hearts, activating everything in our heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We mm-hmm. magnify you, Lord. Kalalabasu de Shiriano Dasta, Yeshadi Ando Dasta, Kalalabasu de Shiriano, 
pulling down the anointing from New Jerusalem, pulling up the energy from the earth from which we were formed. Hallelujah. Yeshua. Amen. This will help you on your day of atonement. We have activated your heart chakra. You have the energy to go deep within. The crystals on the table are also being absorbed. The various forms of heart energy. And we send that out to you. Amen. We direct it into our hearts. Yes. And then out our arms through our swords to you. May the blessings of our risen Savior, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, be upon you. Ha Shemayak, Vishem Yeshua. Amen. Amen. See you at 12 noon Mountain Time. That is in. Uh, Take a little break. That little break is 30 minutes. If you're fasting, go lay down and rest. If your fast includes some water or a smoothie or some juice, take it and lay down and relax. A lot of energy was expelled during that meditation or continue the meditation. Mm -hmm. Some of you, maybe you have a rose quartz or jade or one of the crystals. Just meditate with it close to your heart. Lay down. All right. Amen. Amen. See you at noon. Just click it.